Good morning and welcome back. We're starting off this weekend's gardening segment with a viewer question. Heather Virgil Ashoff sent in these pictures of her Mount Prospect garden. She says she planted these kale last year in a raised bed and it did amazing. So she didn't clean out the garden in the fall because she's lazy, as I totally understand because I am a lazy gardener too. But the kale's been green for weeks. So her question, will this crop be as good and taste as good as last year's even though it's been frozen all winter? Well, the leafy kale can be a biennial in zones 7 through 9, so places a little warmer than here, but Chicago land being in the colder zones five through six, it is not quite right to survive our winters with regularity. So I'm guessing our pretty mild winter this year helped that kale survive into its typical second year. I don't think the kale will be as good this year. Uh, the key there is the center spikes and flowers that are the telltale sign that those plants are at the end of their life cycle called bolting. The process means the leaves become more tough and bitter. The good news is that the flowers are great for spring pollinators and soon these flowers, you'll get these long seed pods, harvest them, dry them for a few weeks to ensure the moisture is removed and you won't have to buy new plants. You can actually grow them from seed for free. If you have enough time to grow those from seed before autumn cold sets in, that's up to the whims of Mother Nature, but you can try growing half of the seeds this year and then half for next spring. Joe Mizek writes in, can you give viewers advice regarding growing plants from seeds indoors? This is something I failed at miserably, he admits, and you know what? I have too because it can be hard to grow plants from seeds. It takes a lot of patience to keep the soil just moist enough to get the seeds to germinate and not too moist that the seeds can mold. One of the best methods I've used to get seeds to germinate, I'll do a little demonstration here. Uh, so start out with a, a not quite wet soaking paper towel. So we'll use the spritzer here and paper towel on a plate keeps the mess contained. And then what you do, the secret I have found over the years is you actually use some cinnamon and you sprinkle that on top of the paper towel because cinnamon is actually a natural uh, mold inhibitor so it keeps away that potential mold growth. You take some seeds and when uh, you save the seeds in the fall it's best to label them so you know when and where they're from. Uh, this actually isn't shouldn't germinate at all but I want to see if it will work. This is broccoli from I, I collected in 2019 and you never know because these actually weren't supposed to germinate either. This is some squash I had from uh, October of 2015 and this actually germinated just fine this season. So you sprinkle the seeds over here, a little bit more moisture, and gently, otherwise the seeds, especially broccoli because they're so small, will just fly away. Make sure that the paper towel is moist, and then you fold it gently to try to keep all the seeds in, and you end up with a Ziploc bag, and I keep and reuse these over and over again. And then gently put the Ziploc into the bag, and the key here is don't seal it. You want the moisture to be able to sort of escape, but not totally dry out. And then you want to put this in a warm, dark place. The cabinet above the oven can be a great option and out of the way place as well. You want to come back in about a week and then gently see what's germinated. These were some beans that I had put in to over of my oven a couple days ago. So it's been about five days for these. And so far, we'll find out together. Looks like they have not germinated just yet, although this one has started to split a little bit. So a sign that possible germination is just ahead. So then you uh, could put that uh, and of course, when you want to grow them, you take the seedlings themselves, you put them in either a paper towel or toilet paper roll that I've cut up. And this one, you can fold the ends down to kind of hold the soil in a little better, but you can also just do it just plain old cut in half. You put some soil in these and these seed pods I've been using are actually some old takeout containers to create these little mini greenhouses and the seedlings can be transited here. Usually I use chopsticks to get a little hole and then put on a windowsill or under a grow light to keep them maturing. Now, some people use prefabricated seed starter pods and skip the whole germination stuff altogether. The cost can range from these from 10 bucks to much more depending on how fancy they get, but whether they start in these starter kits or of course here with your own sort of homemade germination process, it does take some luck and skill with the next step. It's what's called hardening off the seedlings, which just is a fancy term from moving them in and out of the house repeatedly in larger and larger time intervals to get them ready to be transplanted outdoors. But what you spend in time, you do save in money. Growing from seed is way cheaper than buying those plants uh, in starts from the plant store. So some plants have a longer growing season, so starting those indoors can be the only way they can be grown in our part of the Midwest. And it matters what kind of plant you're growing since some seeds do better being planted right in the ground called direct sowing versus ones that can transplant pretty easily. Most of the direct sowing plants are many of the root crops like carrots, beets, and turnips, and even some of those in the squash family as well. Most beans, sunflowers, radishes, leafy greens, and lettuce and spinach. Hang one of these up, they're gonna go somewhere else to make their nest.
So now, last week we answered a viewer question about plants to use to ward off wasps. Thanks to Mitchell who sent me this clip from McKay Joe on Instagram. I'd never heard of fake wasps, wasp nests before, but the poster who also raises bees says that wasps are territorial and will naturally avoid areas where these are hanging. So it could be something you could use in addition to the wasp repellent plants we suggested last week. Invasive garlic mustard, something to watch out for this time of the year. We'll talk about that and the best time to get at it coming up next week. If you've got any gardening questions, especially if it has to do with how weather can affect, affect plants, feel free to send me an email, tjoyce at wgntv.com. In the meantime, I've got that gardening forecast right after the break.